Hi everybody. What I'm going to be talking about with this video is another project where we're going to work this time on creating textural details but using pastels rather than using charcoal. So we've explored doing things like stone before using the charcoal and electric eraser technique but with this technique I want to explore creating stonework or stony textures but this time using colour. So what I've done here is I've just taken a bit of um, a photograph of the Peak District and I've taken a very close up section of one of the photographs and just looking at some of this lovely stone outcrop so you can see the bigger picture here it's a lo lovely sort of shaped stone outcrop there. So just sort of zooming in a bit because we're working at quite a small scale here so if you look at the size of my hand and the size of a bit of paper you can see it's probably about maybe 30 centimeters by about 20 this piece of paper. This is a pastel mat sheet so it's one that allow allows us to create very tight details if we want to. But there's different challenges when it comes to doing this sort of texture on pastel mat. Because the paper itself isn't textured, you're going to have to add a lot of texture manually, as it were, by using pencils and so on. Pastel pencils, for example. So you'll need pastel pencils for this project. Um, in terms of the palette, I'm working on a bit that's actually grey coloured. It doesn't particularly matter, it's just a bit that I happen to have that was the right size for this. Now the reason we've zoomed in and we aren't doing the whole picture, so for example I'll just do the whole picture here, i fold it back out for you, you can just see that's the whole thing there, and my daughter in the background there, but it's a lovely beautiful shaped you know, windswept outcrops here against the Peak District background there. Um, so the reason we aren't doing the whole thing on this scale is because we wouldn't be able to tackle these lovely textures at that scale. So to do a picture of that style with the whole scene there, you'd need to work on, on a piece that's quite a lot larger, a sort of 50 by 70 centimeter, for example. So if you do want to do this sort of thing, this is Stanage Edge, where you've got these lovely rocks here and you want to really show this sort of detail, you're gonna to have to work at a much bigger scale. Don't try and tackle that sort of thing on a bit about the size of A4, because that's not gonna happen. Okay, so back to what we're doing. So what I've got here then is a collection of stony colours. <laughs> so rummage through your set. I've got ochres, I've got greys, I've got lilacs, I've got browns, I've got dark greys, I've got pales, all kinds of different shades in here. I think get, gather everything together you think will, might relate to it and think, well, okay, I'll put a bit of that in as well. You never know, that might be useful, a bit of this sort of very pale ochre. Another sort of slightly brownish one here. And we're just going to build up our layers here and see how things go. Now the key, oh, I see a pit of purple on the bottom of my pastel box. I wasn't going to include purple, so we'll have to get a brush there and dust that off. Luckily we are doing pastel and there's not a catastrophic error. Be a different story if it was a watercolour piece, wouldn't it? Dear, oh dear. Right, so we need to bear in mind that we're going to build up layers on top of the surface here, but not very many layers, because if we, if we put too many layers on, then what we'll find is our pastel pencils won't work over the top because the tooth of the surface is quite soft. So I've done a very quick sketch using a, just a, a Wolf's Carbon, which is a charcoal carbon pencil, just generally giving myself a, a layout of where that bit of rock comes down here, the other bit coming through here, and so on. So just give yourself a quick sketch so you know just about where things go loosely and it's not really you know we're not being drafts people here we are just exploring shapes so don't worry too much if things aren't exact it's not really about that so I'm just dipping in and out there and just moving that around next thing to do then is start to build up some color on the surface I'm just putting in some of the pale well I wouldn't say pale I'd say mid grays so we've got this one We've got um, this one, which is more like a slightly bluish one here. And I might go, is that a different shade there? No, it's very similar. Let's go for something slightly paler. Let's go for that one. So you know, three very sort of mid grays. That one's slightly lighter, of course, but that'll then link to the other lighter ones. I'm just gonna start to put in some of these shades here. So. I'm just roughing in 
where some of the paler colours are using quite blocky marks using this, the side of the pastel the flat long side and just creating some movement on the surface there and I'm not worrying too much about being too precise about my edges particularly or the angles but I'm just starting to build up a little bit. I'm avoiding this area here because it's definitely a darker grey so I'm not doing that with the light one. Now we're going with this mid tone and just slice around a bit here and again I'm just letting the surface of the paper show up here because if you rub too hard or press too hard you're going to fill that tooth straight away so just work over very thinly don't press the pastel in heavily just let it build onto the surface and just getting that movement and pattern in there and the tooth of the paper itself has got this sort of slightly mottled texture so we're going to leave that we're not going to do much blending I don't think now I want to get a darker grey so I'm going to go in with this much darker colour here and just loosely put this over where these more shaded parts are here now as you can see I'm not pressing very hard you can see the colour of the paper coming through quite clearly here so don't go in too heavy handed I'm just sweeping that round and just echoing the, the shape of the rocks there and adding a few of those dramatic shadows in there and then any other patches higher up in the actual brighter surface as well pop those on too so your dab here and there now look at the difference there where this colour going over the previous grey I press the same I put the same amount of pressure there as I put here but that was a fresh bit of paper look how dark that is compared to where it went over the grey here so you can see where it's blending and changing colour straight away so now I'm going to get that mid grey shade I'm going to go through where, where that darker has gone on and just add that colour in with it so sort of mixing it as we go I'm just putting that through and we're ignoring this area here this is the landscape bit we'll, we might come to that later we may not <laughs> I'm just doing rock today so right a bit more of the dark just another quick sweep through adding it even more dark to some of the bits that really are very dark okay leaving it nice and textured flat side of the pastel at all times still and then adding a bit more on top now let's go in now with something a bit more with a colour so I do like my purples as most of you will know right by now so I'm just going to find a little bit of something with a slight purpley tinge so a little bit of purple here and just add a little bit here and there just some dabs of additional colour in there just a little tiny bit of purple there just adding some little dabs of colour and the same thing with a slightly green colour so this is much of a green grey so put a little bit of greenish because you can see in the picture there's definitely quite a lot of greenish tones in here so I'm going to get some greens on here so it's very much a grey green colour again don't press too hard because with these little bits particularly you can find that it just fills the tooth up quite rapidly which you don't necessarily want. Now as you know I often use that this thing which is the flat uh, wedge shape this one but for this I don't want to use that I want to use something a bit more of an angle to it so anything that's got a slightly rounded tip this is one that's been worn down uh, but anything that's even a small round one would do as well so I'm going to use this you see to pull and almost draw with it so rather than holding it flat to the surface like well with the cloud picture I'm just going to kind of drag a few of these marks around and just play with some of the effects here so I'm just going to drag through there oh nasty squeakiness and just work that in slightly and I'm going to just dab my finger over and just loosely go over the surface just lightly stage one was 
sketch it on lightly. Use three or four shades of mid greys, including something slightly blue, slightly green, and then work over the surface, quite loose mark making. Then add the darks and then a quick little blend. So next thing then, I'm going to go start to get on top here and just start to add in a little bit of light where there's some bright edges on things. So I'm looking at this edge along this edge of rock here where it comes up through there and just looking how the light catches that edge and then fades into the rock around it. So I'm using small dabbing marks. I'm not using the tip particularly of the pastel. I'm just dabbing at it with the side, but it's quite a small bit as you can see. I'm just tipping up onto a slight edge on there. So I've got even a slight roll, lifting my arm and my elbow a bit and just rolling it up a little bit. And then the same for how it goes around this edge here, just taking it along and looking at how the light catches some of these areas through here. And it's coming down through here as well. Now I've got one shade of light here. I'm going to get another shade out, which is the previous light I used as well, which is a slightly warmer tone. And I'm also going to get something a bit more, I think, of a yellowy tone to it. So I might go for this very pale ochre as well. So again, it's that thing about having a set of three. So I had a set of three for these greys. Then we had a dark, but we worked over with that. I'm going to set a three for this paler area. So we've got that pale, but also this pale. So we can change tone slightly with our pale because some bits are paler than others. Some bits are very pale. Some bits are not quite so pale. So it's about thinking about which pale you want to use. So just drifting across the surface there and just picking up that texture and then again coming around. Just letting the tooth, the paper, speak for itself here. It's not something I usually do on pastel mat. Usually I just am working the tooth in. I'm not really using the tooth as part of the picture, but this one we are very much doing that. We're using the picture, using the tooth rather as part of it. Okay, I'm going to go in now with the tip of this more yellowy one and just start to put some dabbing marks on here with this one as well. Now you have to be cautious when you're doing something using the tip of the pastel because you'll feel the difference immediately yourself anyway. But what will happen is it fills that tooth straight up. So you have to be just aware of that and think, right, okay, I don't want to overfill. So overfill at this stage, your mark making with your pastel pencils will not go over the top on it. It'll just, uh, it'll just drift across the surface and they'll scrape colour off, but they won't be a great deal of use in terms of leaving detail mark making, so it's just be aware and just be, I'm barely putting any weight on this, I'm just going across the surface and just letting it drift over. So we've got those three shades there. Let's go with something slightly greenish to represent some of that lichen that's on there. You have to choose your green colours with caution because sometimes it just, it just won't work, other times it'll be too green. This is quite a yellowy shade. I'm going to try this initially. This is quite a nice shade in itself, even though it's not necessarily a lichen shade, but I quite like that one, so I'm going to keep that anyway. If we head slightly more greenish than that, take it down a notch. We're going to get this sort of shade. Now, is this the right colour? This is quite a nice dark green. This could be good lower down. Yeah, this could pick up some of these dark green in the shadow down here. Quite nice. So just put a bit of that green to it. Just doing little dotting marks here with the tip of the pass, just, just dotting it in there. But we still need to find ourselves a more pale but bright green for our liking. So it's just trial and error I think until we Pick on me, we think, no, that's probably about right. Let's try this one. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's 
okay, that's all right. I'm just dabbing away and just little dotty marks. Yeah, that mix with the ochre might work quite well. So that works well with the grey. So we're going to go with that. So our liking is going to be three shades. So we've got pale, kind of more olivey green here, much more of a yellowy ochre shade on the green side of that and then definitely green but it's that sort of ochre green isn't it yellow green so three different shades here and they'll, that'll work well for creating some of our ochre details on top so I'm just going to go in with them and just draw by dabbing can you hear this tap tap I'm doing What you're getting is a tap tap and a sort of swirl noise. So I'm tapping away, but I'm also swirling a bit. So I'm I'm tapping and I'm just dotting and I'm then I'm pushing and I'm twisting. So it's a combination of marks that's going on there. Okay, so having done that, what we're going to do next is then start to break out the pastel pencils. Okay, I've got a combination of pastel pencils here. I've got some Wolf's Carbon, which is the um, one I've been drawing with earlier, in various softnesses. So I've got a 2B there and a B. I've got a various tints of charcoal and pastel. So we've got just blacks, ochres, browns, greys. So various shades that you think might be useful. So again, it's that thing about gathering a collection together and then giving it a go and see what we think. 